What's up? Happy Friday. Welcome into the CHGO Bears podcast presented by PointsBet. Use code CHGO when you sign up to get two risk-free bets up to $2,000. What's going on, Bears fans? Adam Hogue, Nicholas Moriano with you. We are back from Hallis Hall. Practice number three in the books. Day four of training camp. And we have some things to talk about. Some exciting yeah, but, rookies. Yeah, like where's where's Nick Shadow? Whoa. Oh, wait, would it be on this side, that side? Yeah. No, yeah. no. Back in Indiana. Ah. Uh, yeah. Mm. yeah. Cheers, boys. There he hey, happy hour Friday. Ooh, Ooh he's got the cheers. Modelo. Nice. Got the Modelo. I have the uh, CHGO koozie going on here. What's Rev the baby? Hey, Rev hazy pitch Brew. from Revolution. Um, hey. In honor hey, of guess training. what? what? Rev Brew sponsoring tomorrow's tailgate out at the Hell yeah. Field at the Waldron Deck at 2 p.m. to 4 p.m. before the Chicago Fire take on Atlanta United, which is followed by the Red Stars taking on the San Diego Wave and Alex Morgan. We will be there, sponsored by Revolution Brewing, 2 o'clock. Uh, there's multiple tailgates happening, so mingle with us, mingle with whoever else. But uh, come on through. Should have some tasty, hazy pitches around, and uh, they're delicious. Yes, that. Uh, and I was also going to say because I knew people were going to ask where they can get one of these, and Can't the yet. answer is um, same, same place you get Nick's hat. Same place. <laughs> no, but we had some of these. I feel like at the uh, White Sox tailgate, uh, they were illicit. Uh, illicit. Our the wonderful Casey Standahar uh, made a couple. Um, I don't necessarily think they are officially licensed yet oh no a bit bootleggy how can you bootleg your own stuff though i believe cafe press or zazzle are two options oh i guess nick did it with that but i yeah. guess my point is like it's not like illegal we're it's our own thing well right i'm just saying yeah, yeah. Re regardless um uh love revolution shout out to them also though in uh in honor of training camp, this is a hop skip from Brickstone Brewery, yes. Bourbon A, Illinois, which I do miss. Sweet. I do oh, look miss. who's in our chat. What? Casey Standahar, nice koozie. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Good job, Casey. So shout out to Brickstone. We, uh, one, of, one of the things I miss about Bourbon A. Mm, boy, this one's tough. If the Bears are over 500 on Halloween, Lawrence goes trick-or-treating as Con Air Rogers. Ooh. <laughs> Accept the challenge. Accept it. Gotta do it. Accept it. I, accept I don't it. know. I'm reading it's Jonathan's accepted. comment. Come on, the odds are overwhelmingly in your favor that you don't have to do that. True. Yeah. Yeah. Uh well, regardless, you need to start growing your hair now. I, I don't want to. I'm getting a haircut on the ninth. Hopefully I can get in earlier. My girl, she's so busy, can't get in to see her. Real quick, this is not how we start shows, but now we are because of this today. Okay. Here's the schedule before. So they play at Dallas the day before. Halloween, so you have a chance. Uh, it was it, it had to be f at five hundred or over five hundred. Uh, it said the Bears are over five hundred. Jerry okay. Steer. So they would have to be over five hundred after the 49ers, Packers, uh, Houston, Giants. One game against Minnesota, Yeesh. Washington, oh. New England. A lot of winnable games. Are there though? They're, I mean, those teams are all are. bad. I know the Bears are not the greatest team in on earth, but I mean, well, being over five hundred is a huge distinction. That means they need to be five and three at that point. That's eight games. Okay, or four, three, and one. Okay, there are ties. Yeah. I've never covered a tie. I don't want, this but it could happen. Oh, I'm looking at this fancy little magnet schedule cool. that oh, they gave me today at training camp. It's nice. nice. So anyway, all right, uh, let's jump in with practice today. Best and wait, are you accepting that or not, though? Oh, uh, no, I'm uh, not. Boo. I, you know, the wife's already thinking she wants to do the uh, what we do in the shadows, the vampire show on FX. Great show. Hilarious. She wants to go as that crew. I don't know if I'm up for that. I uh, personally don't really care about Halloween. I mean, I'm old. I, but say, I, just I can't remember last time I had any kind girl of on the bear suit and hand out candy to children through the window T typically i dress as a football reporter on halloween mm. yeah exactly so it's a very scary costume yeah. all right <laughs> so he's not accepting that 
And right. I agree with Cass. If the Bears don't make it to 500, now we know who to blame. Yeah. Non con air Aaron Rodgers, just regular Aaron Rodgers. I'm out. Aaron Rodgers also likes Hawaii. If you watched, if you followed him on Instagram last year, he had a very epic Hawaiian vacation. Okay. Best and worst we saw at camp today. Nick, kick us off. I'll start with the best thing. It was Jaquan Brisker's interception on Justin Fields, undercutting Cole Komet's route. Just a really good play from the rookie. Matty Berflus talked about it in the presser after practice, but. Those are the types of plays we've been seeing from Jaquan Brisker, him just creating turnovers. So that was easily the best thing I saw in practice today. Unfortunate for Justin Fields, but it was a good play from Jaquan Brisker. What about you? What's your best thing? My best thing is just in general, I just I love how the offensive scheme looks. Okay. Now this is a tricky one from Brian to bring up because I cannot explain it. I am not allowed to, I'm bound by rules, cannot get in the scheme. Um but let's just say this. It's what we think it is, right? It's it's very Shanahan-esque, outside zone, tighter formations. Um, this is not stuff that anybody's given away. It's all the stuff that's been talked about. And it, it's just, it's good to actually see it out there, especially today was mostly red zone. Yeah, so, you know, pretty much all the team stuff they did was in the red zone. And to just see, like, plays that make sense, Right. So the way I put it on Twitter is the way I'll put it here because can't get into like specific scheme design and things like that. But they're finding ways to get Darnell Mooney and Cole Komet open. Okay. Like they're running concepts that get their top targets open and they're creating nice friendly throws for the quarterback, you know, in ways that move him around to make that happen. All the things we've talked about that they should do that we thought they would do. My just thing on this is it's good to see it with your own eyes. That's all. And it wasn't always pretty. Like, we're going to get into mm -hmm. it. I, I Yesterday, I was very high on Justin Fields. Today, I think it was very mixed. I don't think it was bad. I think it was a lot of good from the defense, um, some really good plays. But also not a great day for the quarterback either. Just in general, as uh, Dan Payton puts it here in one of our comments, a real offense. It's just refreshing to see. I like the design. That was the best thing I saw at camp today. Okay, and the worst thing for me, and I see right here in the comments, actually, Adam, Alex says, tell me, Adam, I won't tell anyone the scheme. I'll keep it a secret, so you can just announce it to him on this podcast, and only Alex will hear it. Uh, but the, the worst thing I saw, and I have to give a shout-out to some fellow CHO listeners who are standing next to me watching practice, was a LeBron James jersey. That was just a guy rocking LeBron James Lakers jersey in, okay. in the stands. Like, what's going on here? Why? What's go what this Bears practice, you're rocking a LeBron James Lakers jersey. So I was like, that's interesting. But shout out to them. They're like, Nick, this has got to be the worst thing. So had to say it here. Uh, I mean, it's Lollapalooza weekend. You know, you get all those hoopsters uh, out there in the, in the that's world. That's true. That's a good Completely one. You, about that. you are contractually obligated to wear a jersey to Lala. Yep. Yeah. Completely forgot about that. Spot I've never up. been. I've never been to like really, really any music festival. Oh man, so never Lollapalooza or anything. We, we, well, we, we need to. Okay, I'm going to challenge our graphics department. We need to start um, keeping a running tally a list of all the things Nick has never done. I mean, what what are we up to? He's never Skied, never played baseball. Uh, surfed. What was the first one you said? Surf, skiing, surfball, uh, surfball, surf surfball, surfball, baseball, surfball. surfball. Okay. That's surfball a new sport that nobody's played. Surfball sounds <laughs> awesome, by the way. <laughs> How would that work? I think you just invented a sport that I want to now play. Surfball. Golf. I haven't played it. Golf. Um, Never been to uh, a music concert. Festival. Like concert? A big, have you yeah. ever been to a concert? I've been to, I've been to concerts, but never like a, a big music festival like Lollapalooza or what's the one in Milwaukee or uh, Summerfest. Thunder. Summerfest. Country Thunder? Country Thunder oh, was last too. weekend. Country Thunder. Yeah. Come on. Never I don't know. Thunder. You're actually not allowed to go to Country Thunder if you're over 21. Mm. Yeah, I'm done. Yep. Uh, okay. Surf surfball ball does sound lit. <laughs> I'm Ross, into surfball. Also, never surfball. I don't yeah. think anybody has. That sounds fun. Yeah, I think we've invented something that's. Uh, I like Benjamin's comment. He said uh, it's very difficult to score in surfball because of all the dolphins. <laughs> they do. <laughs> you gotta watch out for the dolphins. They just jump up and knock you off the surfboard. That was a pretty good dolphin this noise. Thank that you. Was, yeah, Not a goat this time. Legit. Not a goat. No, you've improved that. Not a goat. 
Yeah, this is what we do during training camp, right? Every day yeah. you get better. So a couple Raps. weeks ago, that Our sounded Raps. like a goat. Today, it sounded like a dolphin. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. All right. So wait. So uh, worst thing we saw was the hoopster in the LeBron jersey for Nick. What about for you, Adam? Uh, yeah, for me, it was um, just the everybody missing on the O line. Yeah. Which is probably yep. a good segue to how we're starting to show and our biggest topic. But, you know, it's just to see an offensive line that has four rookies on the first team, just in general, four rookies, like would be like insane. Okay. To see, I cannot say I've ever seen that in any training camp I've ever covered. Four rookies on the first team, day three of practice. Uh, insane. Now, when you also throw in that, those four rookies were all drafted fifth rounder later. Like what in the hell is going on here? Now that's your initial reaction. Well, let's add some context here. Okay. First, the things that are not a big deal. One Cody Whitehair, vet day. He was just given a vet day. Okay. So left guard, take a sigh of relief. Not a problem. Oh. With Cody Whitehair, uh, left tackle. There still had Braxton, Braxton Jones out there. I think by next week, good chance Riley Reef will be in there with the ones. He is uh, still ramping up, as Matt Eberflus puts it. So he's just not ready to do team stuff yet. And that's why you have another one of the rookies in there. Uh, now, uh, right guard, Michael Schofield, also still ramping up. I don't know if that's such a given that he's just going to give the opportunity to, to jump in there with the ones or not. I guess we'll... we'll see next week or soon um but also they did sign a veteran there and he's just ramping up center's the one now nah, that's how worried are we about this lucas patrick matt eberflus reveals has a hand injury which explains why he was able to walk off on his own power just fine yesterday uh brad biggs reported today that he's going to need surgery eberflus said he is going to be out some time so i ask you nick how worried are you about Lucas Patrick already being out and missing what sounds like will be most, if not all, of training camp slash the preseason? Well, the big thing, too, here, Adam, it's on his right hand, his snapping hand. So when you're thinking about a long-term injury, I mean, you need to have your, your right hand to snap the ball. So it is significant because he he was, when you're looking at this line, it was probably Cody White here pegged that left guard and Lucas Patrick pegged that center. Now you're going to get a significant amount of snaps to a Doug Kramer who was filling in, like you said, one of those four rookies that filled in today. And that's a guy that just knows this offense. And it was establishing some good chemistry with Justin Fields. And in training camp, that's what you're building, the foundation of your football team, the continuity. Now that's gone for a significant amount of time. So I think it is a big deal. And it, it does, it's a big deal because it's also on his right hand, too, where he's, where he's obviously going to snap the ball. So it's unfortunate. But now the Bears just have to adjust. And they're lucky that they recouped all those draft picks on day three because they literally used them all on the offensive line today. Good point by you on the snapping hand because that means, like, you can't just club it up and get them out there to go. Can't snap yeah. with a club. So um, now – could you, if that potentially is what you have to do, can you play him at right guard? I ah, see. That might be Maybe. something you, you might have to look into, depending on the timetable. But yeah, this is not what you want to see. I mean, to me, the the one piece we talked about in the offseason with the O line, and even in some ways we were reaching on this one, I think, is just Lucas Patrick was the big fish they got on the O line. The the veteran, the veteran guy who Worked his way up with the Packers. Didn't always get a lot of playing time. Then recently did and has played pretty well. Someone who seemed to be a sleeper in free agency that a lot of people liked. And it seemed to be a good scheme fit. And not only that, once he got in the building, we immediately saw this guy get looked at like a leader. Somebody who was taking charge on that old line uh, A veteran presence that they badly, badly need on what looks like is going to be a relatively young offensive line. So, um, look, if he comes back by week one... And it's fine. I'm sure he's the type of player where they can he, they can throw him in there and work things out. But we've also been through interview after interview after interview, including with Lucas Patrick, about how important it is to build that chemistry among the starting five and work as a unit. So at least at a minimum there, you're missing something. 
And obviously, if it goes into the regular season, now you're missing the uh, the big piece you had that you added to that O-line from a veteran perspective. So uh, at minimum, definitely not a good thing. Not the end of the world, probably. Could have been worse. You certainly saw what happened to Ryan Jensen yeah. with the Bucs already uh, with, a, with a significant knee injury. You don't want to see that type of stuff, but still not good. I see a lot of comments here, Adam, with J.C. Treader being a possibility. He is a guy that is familiar with that wide zone scheme. Who knows? Um, yeah. I think, you know, Ryan Pohl is going to want to put the best five available and maybe JC Trey's in the equation. Maybe he's not, but I think he's got to keep all options open at this point. There's got to be some frustration already. I mean, you signed Dakota Dozier, you signed Lucas Patrick, and you haven't even put the pads on. One guy's out yeah. for the season, another guy's missing significant time in the preseason, and that's already an area where you know you're thin. So it's good they spent all those draft picks on those offensive linemen for bodies, but you know, you're still starting to see the lack of depth already when you're looking at a practice like today when you're going, holy crap, there's four rookies out there. And and, and by the way, the fifth guy is um second year is Larry Borum, who's barely played. <laughs> Uh, we should say, though, that Doug Kramer and Sam Mustafer switched off at center. So Mustafer was back at center, spot he's familiar at, but he's also the guy who played center before that they replaced with the guy who got hurt. So, yeah, not a great start there for uh, camp from, from that standpoint. Um, moving on, though, and this was the headline with today's show. Got to feel good about this. Jaquan Brisker, Kyler Gordon, keep making plays legitimate play showing instincts um i want to ask you right away and maybe this is jumping the gun but for two two rookies who have already looked this good and look supplanted as starters i mean don't you i haven't seen defensive rookie of the year odds yet but i'd have to imagine that these two guys would be somewhat high on the odds because, you know, they're already in there as starters. I mean, how many rookies out there can you say are definitely starting week one and are definitely making plays like this already? I just, I don't know what the ceiling is for these guys as a rookie, but I don't think that that's out of the question. question. At least they haven't shown us anything that says we shouldn't consider them as possible defensive rookie of the year candidates. Yeah, no, they've been making a lot of good plays, and we can really speak on the perspective of these two, these two Bears rookies. I'll give you a list of names here, Adam, that are already maybe on the top list, the top ten that uh, CBS Sports has. Uh, Kayvon Thibodeau from for the sure. Giants being one. Aiden Hutchinson, the Lions. Uh, George Kalaftis from the Chiefs, and then you have your first cornerback. If we're trying to put them in, you know, this uh, realm here, Kyer Elam from the Bills, and then you have Kyle Hamilton, the Ravens, Derek Stingley, Texans, Ahmad Gardner from the Jets. So actually a couple of those players that the Bears are actually going to face this season, right? Um, but if, if these two are pegged as starters, which really after each practice that we see, Adam, it seems like that's going to be uh, what's going to happen with Gordon and Brisker. They have opportunities to make plays. They've already been doing it in training camp, but a lot of those guys on the list too – very really good football players first round draft picks right that the the bears some of them they will face but yeah they have some some good competition for sure just even the way that jaquan brisker explained his pick of justin yeah. fields which you haven't seen this on twitter yet there was um uh there were two interceptions both one by gordon one by brisker in the first red zone period both were thrown by fields the first one i don't think there's any question the ball was behind mooney uh, mm -hmm. got tipped up in the air and but brisker made like a i'm sorry uh that was the one gordon had gordon made like a nice like had to reach back with his hand uh made a nice it was just a nice instinctual ball hawking type uh play to secure the football and get the interception so that was what was impressive about it even though it got tipped up to him the brisker one <sighs> i mean look anytime you throw a, a red zone interception the quarterback has to take some blame but to me, that was more of like a really good play by the by the safety in the situation. And remember, one of the plays referenced by Ryan Poles that, of course, breaks my heart is the play he made last year against Wisconsin week one. 
in the end zone right at the end of the game when Wisconsin could have won, and he read the quarterback's eyes perfectly to jump the route. Um, and the end zone angle that really showed that and showed the instincts that Jaquan Brisker clearly has. So today he's explaining this because he talked to the media afterwards, and he's talking about um, – how he was disguising himself in the coverage. And then when he saw Cole Komet cross his face, then he took his eyes to Komet's hip uh, right when he was ready to catch the ball and he jumped the route to pick it off. That's some high level shit right there from a guy who has yet to play a single snap in the NFL. You certainly understand why they drafted him. And, and it, this isn't just a one-time occurrence. This is when... This goes back to when I talk about how important first uh, first impressions are with rookies, okay? And especially when it's not just like one practice, but you can stack this stuff up going from OTAs to now. And there's really nothing not to like, especially in Brisker's case. I mean, Gordon had the, oh, he's not practicing a little bit during the offseason program. What's going on there? But with Brisker, it's just been like literally every day showing up, making plays. What's encouraging too, Adam, is that, like you said, the word instinctual, but it seems like they're just playing fast in this defense. And it's only, what, day four of training camp. So obviously that's what the, the one of the perks of with this defense is that it allows the, the defensive players to play fast, to play other strengths. And for these rookies to come in, already adopt the system and just the terminology, they're showcasing that. Already, and obviously pads are not here yet. That's Tuesday is when we'll get the first day of pads. But it is encouraging to see that these two rookies are making plays and that it's, it's almost seemed like it's natural to them. So, again, let's see if they can stack these days up now when the pads are here. But it is a good sign for the Bears because these two guys are most likely going to be starters. And then I think that what's also um, – what all when it comes to – just sort of the football IQ side. Sometimes you you learn this stuff just from hearing what teammates and coaches have to say about a guy. And, um, you know, one of the things I'm continuously going to try to figure out with Bayless Jones here on the offensive side is like how quickly he's picking up all these little things that they want him to do within the offense. Because sometimes when you ask a guy to do too much, it backfires. So relaying this to, back to Kyler Gordon, Matt Eberflus explained today about how their game plan with Gordon, he said that they knew right away that he was somebody that was going to be able to flex outside, inside. But the reason we didn't see him inside in the offseason program was because they just wanted to take it like one step at a time, start him outside, throw everything outside at him, and see how he absorbed it and took that all in before they gave him more. And apparently he aced that, even without the practices that he had. Because from day one, once they got the training camp here, Nick, it's obvious that they're putting a huge emphasis on him being able to play inside too at that slot position. And he continues to make plays there too. So, um, and let me be honest, I wasn't completely sure where he lined up on that play where he got the interception, but considering the area of the field where he got it, I'm thinking he was inside because he made it sort of just outside the hash marks. It wasn't like he was on the sideline. Yeah, he was inside on that play, but I think for the majority of practice, Adam, for at least today's practice, Gordon was opposite of Jalen Johnson on the outside for today's practice. But I think on that play, yeah, he was on the inside. So, again, speaks to the flexibility that he's kind of already showcasing. And obviously, like you said, Iberflus, they knew. And so now we're kind of seeing it all come to fruition here inside, outside on any given play. Gordon can line up there. All right, want to tell you before we move on that the best way to support CHGO is to download the PointsBet app and use code CHGO when you sign up. And if you do that right now, you'll get two risk-free bets up to $2,000. And that's not it. If you make a $50 or more first-time deposit, you'll receive a free CHGO membership, which unlocks all of our web content, and you'll even get a free shirt of your choice from the CHGO locker. That's $2,000 in free bets a free CHGO membership, and a free T-shirt from the CHGO Locker, all for making more than a $50 first-time deposit at PointsBet. Any questions, email PointsBet at allchgo.com, and we will help you out. Your home for live in-play betting just got even better. If you see an edge in the game you're watching or if you see your favorite team is primed for a comeback, don't just watch the game. Bet along with it live. More live betting, more live markets, 
and faster live cash outs with points bet. Download the points bet app right now. Use promo code CHGO. What are you waiting for? It is time to elevate your live betting game. Well, if you or someone you know has a gambling problem and wants help, call 1 800 Gambler for crisis counseling and referral services. Chicago sports fans, your home for the best Chicago sports coverage is partnering with a leader in sports merchandise and collectibles. CHGO has teamed up with FOCO to secure your access to the best collectibles and gear around, whether it's Bears, Sox, White Sox, Blackhawks, Bulls. FOCO has it all and has something for everybody, your kid, your loved one, a friend. They got it all. So if you're looking for new gear for Bears training camp, definitely check out FOCO because they have officially licensed gear for men, women, and kids with everything from bobbleheads to swimsuits to those Crocs that I still don't have. But FOCO has got you covered with the best Chicago merchandise of your favorite team. Head on over to FOCO.com or click the link below in our YouTube description. For all non-presale items, use the promo code CHGO for 10% off. Real quickly, Adam, do you have a pair of Crocs? Because I like I'm not on the Croc train yet. No. I hear from the chat though, people love their Crocs. So. Like almost every one of our players at Carmel wears them, and I just rip on them every day. <laughs> like, what are you Good. doing? They say they're very comfortable. Um, I've never even put a pair on my feet, so I don't know. But that's what I hear. They're comfortable, but I just honestly the look, like it's just weird. Yeah, that's just that's just me though. All right. Um, I forgot to do bear, not a bear off the top. We might have to do this one for uh, the, our viewers because oh, we, oh, oh, whoa, whoa, it's like flashing. Oh, oh. Whoa, freaking me <laughs> out, man. All right, uh, Jake, fun. Jake Tongs, bear, or not a bear. Well, I know the answer. Let's yeah, give a, answer. let's give a second for the uh for the commenters here. Jake Tongs, is that tongs. a bear or not a bear? Tongs, tongs, tongs people. What? Jake tongs. tongs. Let's see what are people not a bear. We got not a bear there. We got a couple not um, a bears coming in. Oh, we got a bear though. Okay. Bear, not a bear. Mostly not a bears. Uh he is a Lawrence. bear. Okay, he is there a bear. you go. I was going to ask Lawrence, yeah. He no, is he a is a bear. Um I saw him today. As he clearly jumped off the line early and nobody called it. <laughs> Was I the only one who saw that? Uh nope. I definitely had that. Like there's someone jumped off, but he, I didn't get he, the number. Now I know. He was like on the end of the line of scrimmage as the tight end and just ran a flat for a touchdown. And I'm like, whoa, 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 wait a minute. He clearly jumped early. What 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 did it, nobody's blowing that dead? I couldn't believe it. So that's how I learned. Who Jake Tongs was six four two forty, rookie like out of California, tongs? like like Tong Kitchen Tongs or what? yeah, but spelled T O N G E S, Tongus. Yes. Okay. Tongus. Tongs. Yeah. Tongs. I don't know where's he from. Tongs. France. By the way, number one in the personal protector r- rankings. Uh, I, got, I managed to get the cardboard roster it's today. Bit of a bit of a Carlos Boozer look on the uh... DeAndre Houston Carson. Yeah. I got yesterday's Dane Crookshank, which oh, we've Crookshank. actually seen. No, I, I have a quick question. A <laughs> uh, question about uh, oh, where is that? Oh boy. Was Crookshank back from Outlander? Sure, he was back, <laughs> but I again I didn't see much of Crookshank. Okay. I know some people were asking about Thomas Graham earlier, and still not back. He got in, still not back. Eber Flus mm. didn't say much about him, but not back. Tevin Jenkins still not back. Now I'm gonna transition. Now I want to be something very clear. I'm not what I'm about to say might not necessarily have to do with those two guys, but just like a PSA that we have to keep in mind. I don't know if you guys are aware of this. COVID nineteen is still a thing. Okay, so I, this goes for all teams, all players. I do not know if that has anything to do with the mysterious absences of these two players that the Bears won't say anything about. But all I'm saying is that you can still get it. And there are definitely going to be players who get it sometimes. And there is no longer a COVID-19 list. That's why I'm bringing this up because I almost forgot this myself. And I think it's important for fans to remember that there's no longer a COVID-19 list to put players on. um, Unless I'm completely missing something, but I don't think there is. And so they don't have to disclose anything. And that's fine if they don't. I'm just saying that whether it's the Bears or another team at any point. Now, 
personally, like in the past when players would get a get the flu or something, you'd say they have an illness and there was nothing wrong with that. Like, especially in Tevin Jenkins case, like I would probably come out and say that if that is. And again, I don't know if that's what's going on here. So maybe that's not why they're doing that. But I'm just saying in the case of a player getting COVID, I would personally come out and say, hey, it's just an illness. We don't have to get into it any more than that. Just sometimes add speculation that is unnecessary. So, again, don't know if what's going on there. But meanwhile, I'm listening to the radio and people are talking about like trade talk with Tevin Jenkins. And meanwhile, I'm like, who the hell's trading for Tevin Jenkins? That's very true. Yeah. Roseland Survivor says, "Can you guys see Jenkins getting waived? Um, by the end of the month, potentially. If there's if." Like, I will you say know, this. I, it certainly doesn't seem like they like him a whole lot. I won't go that far. But I'll say that, like, given the injuries that have already happened along the offensive line, <laughs> it probably doesn't hurt to keep him on there. And we still haven't seen him in pads yet, if, if he will be back, whatever he's dealing with at this point. But it's just not looking good for Tevin Jenkins. An optic standpoint, because we don't know what he's dealing with. And obviously him being on the second team, being a second round draft pick that the last regime moved up to go get. It's just not going in the right direction for Tevin Jenkins right now. One of our commenters said Jenkins isn't. I'm confused. What? Someone just commented and said Iberflu said that Jenkins had an illness. When did that happen? He, I, I thought know. he said he woke up with a, a thing. I don't know. He had a radio. Uh, he was on ESPN 1000 yesterday and said uh, something about Jenkins. But I don't know if it was illness. I don't know. Steve B, uh, thanks for the two bucks. He says, yeah. Yeah. the Bears told the reporters what happened to Patrick, but have they ever said why Roquan Smith is on the pup? Uh, well, they said he took his physical and ended up on pup with an injury. So you just got to believe him, I guess. But yeah. Um. I did appreciate, though, that Matt Eberflus came out and said, you know, in Lucas Patrick's, Lucas Patrick's case, that, hey, it's something that's going to be out for a little bit. Didn't say much more than that, but at least said, hey, it's a hand injury. He's going to be out for a little bit. That makes sense, because otherwise, like, two weeks from now, people would be like, well, where the hell is he still? And it's just, like, so unnecessary sometimes. But she uh, would do it like Wani, though, and say he's got a hand. He's, he's got, got a hand. hand. I like it when the, he's got a foot. Yeah. See, that's the problem because he should have two <laughs> feet and two feet. hands. Like, if you only have yeah. one, then you're in trouble. Makes it a little difficult to play football. All right. Um. Again, I just want to make sure people understand that that can still be a thing that pops up this season from time to time, whether the Bears or other teams, with your fantasy teams. So, um, I would personally be surprised if this whole Tevin Jenkins thing like has something to do with them like holding out because they're trying to trade him or he's trying to go somewhere else. I think that's a little too over the top, but I don't know. All right. Um, I will tell you one guy that stood out to me in a good way just for a one day. And I, I hope it continues. But Equimania Sam Brown had a nice little day for mm -hmm. himself. A uh, couple touchdown catches in the red zone. One was a good jump ball type play where he just jumped over Kindle Vildor. Nothing Kindle Vildor did wrong there. He's just smaller. <laughs> if you get a chance to see Equimania St. Brown in person, I mean, the dude looks the part. He is 6'5", 214 pounds. Um, you know, he is not a small guy. And it was interesting on the heels of what Luke Getzey had to say yesterday where he's like, you know, when the, he got let go by the Packers and then came back. He thought like Equimanius came back with a little bit more professionalism and kind of seemed like a pro. He was only able to put that into nine catches last season, but now he's in a prove it situation. Like so many others like Byron Pringle and Nikhil Harry and the list goes on and on Dante Pettis, like a bunch of guys who have had high expectations elsewhere that they haven't really lived up to. Um, and so for one day in the red zone with a 6'5 wide receiver, I'll tell you what, he did what I was critical of Nikhil Harry yesterday not doing. He got a couple plays where you go, go up and get the football over a smaller defensive back, and he made the play. So good for Equimania St. Brown. 
Yeah, and on that play, Adam, it was kind of like a scramble drill for Justin Fields, and I don't know if he would have been sacked. Oh, he 100% play. would have been sacked. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that part a lot of, of guys you're back right. there. We should, but that's exactly why. Do you remember earlier in the, se- in the preseason or uh, off season when I asked Eberflus about that, like his philosophy mm-hmm. on letting plays go or blowing them dead? That's exactly why you let him go because you got to see Equimania St. Brown on the back end, even on a play that in the game would have been a sack. The ball got put up there, and in a one-on-one battle, he came down with it. Now you have that on tape. Yeah, and that's kind of what you want to see in that opportunity. If like Justin Fields were to escape the pocket. Give your 6'5 wide receiver a chance. He put the ball where it needed to be over what he's going to be bigger than every corner in the league. There's no 6'5 corners or none that you're going to face on a regular basis. So, yeah, it was. It didn't end up being just a waste of a rep. Justin Fields got to play it out, and Equinemius St. Brown got to make his, his catch of the day. So uh, it was. It worked in both favors there for Justin Fields, for Equinemius St. Brown, and, you know, I think Justin Jones knew in his mind, like, yeah, I had – I had Justin Fields in the backfield. Yeah, I. There was a few plays like that with that <laughs> offensive line yeah. Yeah. today, where you're just like, oh. I and and you don't want to be too harsh on them too, because like, mm-hmm. what what are you what are four fifth round or later rookies supposed to be doing, like day three of their first NFL training camp, especially when they don't even have their pads on which I agree with Luke Getzey. I think the defense gets the advantage in that situation. So I'm not going to focus on that too much, but um, did want to point that out. Uh, Dante Pettis, speaking of him, I saw he had a drop in the red zone period. I think that was with the second team with Trevor Simeon on the field throwing, but that was one of the observations I had written down. And um, yeah. That was I'm going. I, I'm just kind of actually looking at my thread I had during practice of the red zone period. I think I mentioned most of this stuff already, but uh, if you missed it off the top, just really good to see the offensive play designs, which we can't describe completely. But if you get out to practice and you get a chance, I think you'll like what you're seeing. Yeah, fields in space. I, I, maybe I can say, it, maybe I can't, but that's kind of what it was. They you sent know, him just, to space on a rocket. Yes. Yes. See how I bailed you out on that one? There. Yeah. yeah. Um, Byron Pringle also had a, a drop. So that's two days in a row that I noticed him. Good ball from Justin Fields, but just kind of went off his, his uh, hands near the left sideline. So you obviously want to see the guy that's supposed to be the number two make some of these catches. But that's the second play, very similar uh, area of the field where Byron Pringle can't come down with the catch. Um yeah, kind of going through my notes here, Adam. I also, I know Will mentioned this player yesterday, and I'm like, okay, maybe I have to monitor him a little more. Maybe not. Greg Stroman had a nice pursuit on one of the running backs, Tristan Ebner, uh, making a play. Yes, fair or not fair, not fair. for, yeah. <laughs> for Stroman uh, there. But Cubs pitcher yeah, or not a Cubs again. pitcher? <laughs> exactly. But, yeah, that's – uh. I, did you I, notice – uh? Go ahead. Just real quick on Pringle. I did notice later he came back and had a diving catch right at the goal line that he managed yeah. to get over. So, uh, you know, he good and bad. little up and down the first couple of days, but I do want to give him credit for that play. So we, we kind of talked about, we've been talking about this for a while with Justin Fields always having like a bounce back and it started off kind of rough for him with the two interceptions, but I noted in the seven on seven period, and even though a lot of these passes were shorter, there were, he wasn't like trying to uh, even like go 20 yards down the field. They, they He had 10 straight completions to mm-hmm. each one of those receivers just to kind of end that portion of the seven on seven period. So seeing what he did in the beginning and good plays made by Gordon and Brisker, but seven on seven period, taking the check downs and just kind of, you know, utilizing his weapons. Nikhil Harry scored a touchdown in the flat. Darnell Mooney did the same. It was a Darnell Mooney touchdown, then a kill Harry touchdown that ended the seven on seven period for Fields. But he ended the practice with ten straight completions, and obviously they had Fields go, then Simeon back to field. But that was you know fitting the narrative for Justin Fields bouncing back after what was a you know initially a rough start. Yeah, I um, I, I you know my impression of Justin Fields' day, I think was remember the QB meter I had a couple years ago? That was fun. Yeah. I mean, I'd put it more towards the good side. Um, mm-hmm. 
I think by the time practice was over, the full picture, you felt good. And even going towards those, you know, talking about those two interceptions. Look, the first one I do put on the cornerback. I wish I had a replay like I do with any of these plays. Um, but it looked like it was behind the receiver, got tipped up in the air and picked off. Uh, nice catch by God, Kyler Gordon, as we talked about earlier. But I do put that one on the quarterback. The second one, again, anytime you throw a red zone interception, probably not a good thing. Uh, man, I just, again, not really having – uh, a, a replay, but those plays, thanks to the Bears, I should say this. The Bears, I don't know if it was just a coincidence or whatever, but they did practice on the side where the fans were today when they did their team yeah. stuff. Good for them for doing that because the other day, to me, like if you want to hide from the media, fine, but like when you open practice to fans, you should practice in front of the fans. So to their credit, they did today and the fans got a good look. So if you came out today, I hope you guys enjoyed that, but um, what I was going to say is I really think that, that second INT was just more of a good play by Jaquan Brisker than a bad throw by Justin Fields. Sometimes that's going to happen. They're going to get you. I guess unless you're Aaron Rodgers who like never throws an interception, but you know, he, I'm sure, uh, man, I know it went viral last year, but Aaron Rodgers threw a pick and oh no, he got picked off by a, like a camper. Like there's a, a, a like high oh school I remember camp. that remember that yeah, yeah with the kid off. <laughs> so he throws interceptions too. What a cool I mean for that kid like and to have video of it he's gonna be able to brag about that the rest of his life. Yeah, and I think did Aaron Rodgers like try to throw the ball like near him afterwards or something? Or, yeah, he like turned know. around and like threw it at him. <laughs> but yeah, I think the kid handed it back to him. Um, uh, he's like, oh yeah, yeah, yeah he threw handed it back to him like to mock him. <laughs> So, I yeah. hope that kid makes the NFL someday. And then when he makes it, they're going to show, you know, they're going to show that clip when he gets drafted Oh yeah, over and over again. Um, Good stuff. So anyway, like, look, for, for being the person that really challenged Justin Fields on the show earlier this week to, you know, blow me away in training camp, I think he's off to a good start. You know, we're, we're a few days into this thing and it's, I think it's a good start despite a couple of interceptions today to your point, I think it's good that you bring up that extra seven on seven period towards the end. Um, and even the second team period when they were 11 on 11, I thought he was, he was much better too. So in your, st I, I can't get too much into the scheme, but you're seeing plays where they're, his legs are a weapon, like tap into yes. that. This dude runs a four, four. He's still really, really good. So I think that that's, there's been a couple plays where you don't really know if it's a sack or not. And there's a couple plays where it's just like, oh, yeah, he's fast. You should probably, you know, call that. <laughs> <laughs> Tap into that, uh, you know, God-given potential that he has. Right. Uh, he can he can make defenses pay. All right. What do we have for uh, our second break here? I guess there we just... go. I, I think I got a points bet. Do you see yeah. that? If you're watching the podcast, it's right up there. I don't even know if I'm pointing the right way. If my yeah, you are. Mirrored, but uh -huh. okay. Well, uh, if you enjoy CHGO, one way to help us to continue to grow is to download the points bet app and use code CHGO when you sign up. Not only are you going to get two risk free bets up to two thousand dollars, but if you make a fifty dollar more first time deposit, you'll receive a free CHGO membership which unlocks all of our web content, and you'll get that free shirt of your choice from the CHGO Locker. If you have any questions, you can email pointsbet at allchgo.com, and we'll help you out. And in case you missed it, online sign-up is available in Illinois. You can actually download the PointsBet app right now and register your account from start to finish, all from your phone. So what are you waiting for? Once the game starts, don't just bet. Live your bet life with PointsBet. Gaming problem? Call 1-800-522-4700. All right, final segment of the week. Um, just so you're aware, there we will not have shows Saturday, Sunday. We're back Monday. Uh, we make up for that on the other end when the Bears are off during the weekday. We still have a show for you um, on the off days. So uh, still have plenty of coverage on all CHGO. Tomorrow, camp will still be covered, but we won't have a show until Monday. So we're closing out the week strong here, and we got plenty of questions that uh, Lawrence stars throughout the show and hi we seem to have a lot today so let's do it uh yeah we got some uh, questions first off uh shout out to jonathan otten for the five dollar super hey. chat nice thanks for the awesome camp coverage and special thanks to lawrence for making me laugh this week love the show 
Okay. Now I want to know specifically what he was laughing at. Uh, maybe it was the dolphin. Maybe it's the fact that uh, my backdrop keeps changing. I don't know if anyone else is noticing that or if that's just me. I'm doing I was just going to say, yeah. He did, I was he like, did a did good job of, stuff? yeah, he did a good job of decorating that table right before you jumped on, Nick. Mm. Oh, and, I didn't even uh, notice the God. helmet. Yeah, that <laughs> appeared. Yeah, there's all kinds of things. Uh, that's we got actually pretty dope. Chat. Um, this is from Scott. Five bucks. Thank you, Scott. He says, Hogue, I like that you're comparing fields to your expectations. What about how these practices compare to what we've seen from QBs here in Chicago? Oh, boy. Um, better than I usually see. I'll say that. I'll say that. But someone else has been asking, like, how does it compare to Trubisky in year two? Um, I'm, okay. Well, first of all, it's been three practices. Yeah. I do remember, though, Trubisky being in pretty much every year up and down. I mean, the, the first thing that stood out to me about Trubisky the first year when he was a rookie was how much better he was than Mike Glennon right away, uh, <laughs> even though he was, like, running with the third stringers. Remember, Mark Sanchez was actually the backup to begin with. People forget that. The time. Yeah, and then at least that ended quickly. They moved Trubisky up to number two relatively fast. But, um, yeah, like it, it's still a little too early to totally make that comparison, but... I feel better about number one to this point. Jay, uh, Jay's the only other quarterback that I that I covered that Jay Cutler, who you know could put on a show in practice. You know he'd have some days that he was just, just smoking things, like just firing him back and forth, <laughs> just right out there on the practice field. Uh, Chris Cutler. said my mic didn't sound good with the helmet stuck to it, so we're taking that off. Uh, Jonathan, following up on the what I was, what was funny, the trifecta ticket that I pulled out of my wallet that was i mean i'm still blown away by that that you just yeah. pulled that out of your pocket that happened uh okay you want to get that back to more questions sure let's see um let's see here how about oh well we gotta start with this one who we are adam adam who, who you know i need that jack sanborn news asap i'm yeah. Wisconsin, baby <laughs> uh he's been out there getting some and he's get, first of all he's getting a good opportunity with roquan being out he's one of the guys that's stepping up uh, I noticed he got some reps with the ones today. Mm -hmm. And um, in terms of him making plays, he just, I haven't just nothing. Pick on, he had the pick on fields, what, two practices ago? Yeah, now? I think that but was day one, right? Day yeah. one, but nothing to nothing of that level, which is high level stuff um, since then. Yeah, but I think he's off to a good start, and he's getting. You can tell a lot by how they're giving. You know what they think about guys when they're um, getting reps with the starters. Yep. Uh, granted, you know Roquan being out obviously helps that, but it's it's a good sign. Okay, uh, let's see. How about what wide receiver looked best today besides Mooney? Ryan Gutierrez. Uh, what wide receiver looked best today besides Mooney? ESB. I think Equimania St. Brown. Yeah, I yeah. Have to, I would go with St. Brown too. We need to come up with an award with that, like the non Darnell Mooney award. Yeah, Ooh, we'll have to work that, on that. that we'll change every day. Title. Well, uh, Mark Car, our friend Mark Carmen lost his mind at one point towards the end of practice today, like just mad that Justin Fields kept throwing it at eleven. Like you already know what, well, like you're fine with Darnell Mooney. Start, you got to throw it to other people. And I'm like, well, that's easy for you to say. If you're Justin Fields, who are you going to go to? Yeah. Seriously. I'm going to throw it to Mooney. But yeah, good player. Javier Castro. How was Nikhil Harry today? Didn't Cut notice him a ton. And then right at the end of practice, he was on the receiving end of a, one of those uh, touchdowns from fields in the seven on seven that Nick talked about where he went 10 for 10. Yep. All right. So, um, but it was a ball he should have caught. So it wasn't like anything spectacular. Yeah, it, it, he was open, like no, no contests or anything. So easy. Good job getting open, though. Uh, how yeah. about that from CJ? Did fields look on time with the brisker pick or did he tunnel on Comet? So I would okay in terms of like the vision, tough. I, I'm guessing if Brisker read it and jumped it, there was probably maybe a little bit of a predetermination. I hate saying that though because without knowing seeing the replay, it's hard to really tell. Um, 
on time, though I thought so. Like, the ball didn't look behind Komet. It really was, regardless, it was a really good play by Jaquan Bresker. Like, that's the headline from it. Like, figuratively and literally on this podcast. <laughs> okay, what else we got here? Um... Oh, Kenny, I don't know if you see this one, Lawrence. Was there any heckling from the crowd today, Adam? I thought the crowd was live, lively today. Like, there was there was a boost in energy from, from the crowd at uh, Hallis Hall. Good yeah, that point. Was, that was actually uh, this question here from Cordy. Cordy, you, I heard the energy was up today, Adam. What say you? Agree. Agree. As a resident crowd energy guy, um, it was better today. Good job. Wait a minute. Hey, by the way, it also helps when they practice in front of the fans. So I can see things. Yes, that was good. Um, the heckling thing, by the way, that's just a bit. I mean, I don't need, I'm not encouraging people to actually heckle the players, but it is funny. There's like one guy last year who was out there every day, like just yelling at the offensive lineman. Um, so I get a kick out of that, but I'm not encouraging it. In general, though, there was more energy today from the crowd. And uh, so good job. Okay, uh, Ricky, I know it's only a few days in the training camp, but does the defense look ahead of the offense or the other way around? Good question. I think, uh, I think the defense still looks ahead. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like, but Fields has had good, like, yeah, Fields has had good days, but overall, defense is still making plays, and there hasn't been a lot of fumbles yet. And I know even if it was big on that, but still, the defense, I would put them ahead of the offense. All right. From Chris, so far, what you've seen in camp, is this offense going to drive me to drink this year? <sighs> Cheers. Probably. <laughs> probably. 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 <laughs> Why do you think we're starting on day three at camp? Yeah. Well, Dello was finished. I think the scheme is not going to be the thing that drives you to drink. If it's the offense this year, I think it's going to be more so maybe the lack of depth and some of the lack of weapons. But I don't think you're going to be sitting there screaming about this you know, why they left Braxton Jones on an island for an entire game. <laughs> I don't game. think they're going to be, I don't think they're going to be any games like Cleveland. Like, I don't think that's going to be the case. Like that, that. Whoa, 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 whoa. whoa. That should sense. be like the minimum. That should never, yeah. ever happen in the history of the NFL <laughs> ever again. Like regardless of the hope. Bears. You would hope. <laughs> that should never happen again but yeah if if we're even anywhere in the neighborhood of that cleveland game then there's still problems true yes uh speaking of drinking nomad just says i'll put modello in an iv and just let it drip all damn day <laughs> wow uh, all we right. it, we uh legal disclaimer we do not endorse that here at chgo i mean i wouldn't put an iv in yourself for any reason be it i hate Adele i or... hate needles I was talking to Zach Pearson today from Bear Report. Like we were talking, I don't know how we got in discussion of like, I don't know, like IVs and stuff. But I cannot. Needles are my worst fear. Even though what, what are you afraid of? I just hate it. I can't I like anywhere near point, like the veins your, here. And yeah, I'm oh. not a fan either. No. Well, I'm not a Easy. fan of it. I'm not like craving it. I just I will fight the doctor. Like Ooh, get away from me with the needle. Like uh, uh like I'll hold. I can't. And then he just mm -mm. jabs it wherever he can. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Nino says we'll get to use the running back by committee approach. No, That's tough to say. David Montgomery is the number one running back. I don't think there's any doubt about that. Khalil Herbert should get more carries though, but not running back by approach. Shout out to David Montgomery who said he's having a child soon. Yes. He told us that today. He so, seemed more uh, upbeat today. Uh, where there's been some uh, David Montgomery. Has it fluctuates yeah. with him. He's either like really on or he just doesn't want to be there. Yeah. Like pretty much like the rest of us, I think. So I don't, I'm not blaming him for that. I just, you know, it, 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 he can be interesting because there's days where he's like really engaged with the media. Yeah. Um, uh, follow up on the, uh, the needle situation. Uh, Zach Meyer says, so Nick doesn't have any tattoos, but I definitely know there are certain tattoos visible on screen. So how did that work? Yeah, you're going to have to explain that. It's it's like a different sensation, I guess, because it's not like going directly like into the vein, I guess. But I, I don't know how I did it. 
Like, I, I hated the whole process of it. I don't think I'll ever get any more tattoos because for hours, however long it takes, like, it is just awful. Like, it sucks. Like, I hate it, but somehow I did my three that I have. But, yeah, it's not it's not a fun process. Not a fun process. Um, uh, Adam good. Dobbs says, I don't like needles either, but fighting the doctor is going to make it worse. Agree. It, no doubt it is. No doubt. True. I'm just amazed that Lawrence and I didn't call you out for that. And it took a commenter to do it, but good job by the, that's yeah. why you're here. That's why you're here because um, that's a great point with the tattoos. Let's see here. One last serious question from Alex. Uh, what do you expect to see on Tuesday when the pads come on? Urgh. Loud noises. <laughs> I like that. Loud noises. Yes. Okay. Um, hopefully we see an offensive line that is able to push back a little bit, right? I mean, those defensive linemen are just like, phew, phew, just going through those gaps. Hopefully a lot of plays are Justin are Fields. The Justin Fields said hut, run. Like, <laughs> it, it's tough sometimes out there right now. And, and I'm not even putting the blame on, like, part of it is the personnel. But it's also when you can't push back and can't really hit back on the line, what are you supposed to do? True. Anything else? <laughs> Thoughts on the alternate helmets? They suck. I did finally see one in person today. Um, it's okay. Not with the orange jersey. It's just, I don't know. That's just me. Too much orange. And then, uh, you know, this I thought was sort of funny. Our uh, Jonathan, it, he called out our resident Lions fan. So CHO, can we get a Don Burr tailgate for Bears versus Lions road trip tailgate? Okay. If we're doing a road trip tailgate, we're not going to Detroit. All due respect to Detroit, not the destination we're going. Okay. Dallas. Oh goodness. Not happening. Cool. Dallas yeah. makes sense. Oh, Green Bay. Atlanta. I would say Green Bay. Oh yeah, Green Bay. Okay. Early. I'll on. challenge. I'll challenge Bears Twitter whoever out there right now, because I've heard this and I do not know if it's true because I haven't seen it with my own eyes all the times I've driven up there to Green Bay and driven through some of the neighborhoods. I have heard that there are a couple houses close to Lambeau Field that are owned and um, essentially inhabited by Bears fans. Like Bears fans live like within walking distance to Lambeau Field, because if you've ever if you've never been to Lambeau, it's like there's a it's it's almost like Wrigleyville, but football. Like mm -hmm. there's just houses, there's parking lots, and then there's houses, uh, and it's a neighborhood. So I have heard that there are Bears fans that live there, and if that is true, if there are Bears fans that have a house near Lambeau that would like to host CHGO pre and post, yes, before Lambeau Field game. I'm not saying we can 100% do it because I'm going out of my skis here right now, but I'm just yeah, challenging but... to find the location. And if that can happen, I'm in. Oh, well, yeah. Also, you're required to have a really good Wi-Fi connection. Ethernet, perhaps. Yeah. How else do you fun. suggest we do this, though? We got we to gotta find it. Someone host uh, us. Otherwise, we're going to Dallas. I just made that up. Hundred percent, right. though, I can say we're not going to Detroit. <laughs> okay, well, uh, let's see. This is a get life out of here. in general. Final reminder: come join us at the uh, football tailgate tomorrow, two o'clock at the Waldron Deck and uh, the South Side of Soldier Field. Two to four, uh, we'll be out there, sponsored by Revolution Brewing. So uh, there will be some tasty hazy pitch uh, pale ales there, hazy pale ales. And then following that, the Fire take on Atlanta United and the Red Stars take on the San Diego Wave. Not at the same time. Fire at four, Red Stars at seven. Uh, let's see if Mal Pugh can outscore Alex Morgan. Cheers. It's exciting. Good event. Uh, check it out. Uh, make sure you, um, you know, do you have to register for that or do you just show up? Uh, no, just show up. Um, yeah. Even if you don't have a ticket to the game say you're going to Lollapalooza later just walk Ooh, on through on the way I mean you're already walking 700 miles might as well make it 707 
Yeah. Um, yeah. Okay. Uh, two final notes. I just saw on Twitter that Mitch Trubisky hit Anthony Miller deep for a 30 yard throw in uh, Pittsburgh Steeler camp. In case you want to know That's that. So and also a reminder that if the bears are above 500 at Halloween, that, uh, our guy Lawrence is going to dress up as Aaron Rodgers. Con Air, Aaron Rodgers. Yes. It's a good way to end the week. Appreciate everybody watching. Coverage continues tomorrow from Lake Forest, Bears training camp, practice number four. We're back as a show on Monday, 2 p.m., following practice that day. Make sure you're following us at CHGO underscore sports at CHGO underscore Bears. Hit that like button, subscribe, tell your friends about what we're doing. We'll talk to you Monday. Two o'clock.